Maayong adlaw sa tanan. Good day, Negros Oriental, and welcome to Flexi Ed, flexible learning experience in education. My name is Hans Villahermosa, and I am your online host for this TED Talk inspired segment of Flexi Ed. And I'm going to be with you for this entire segment full of fun, meaningful, and insightful lessons. All right, so Karun, we are very excited because we have a very special guest. This special guest of ours is a very successful Negrense who is making a difference all over the world. But before anything else, no, kablo kong dagan sa dang nangotana because this is still our second episode for Flexi Ed. And you might be wondering, what's up now Flexi Ed? What is Flexi Ed and what is it? Four. No, kadang flexi ed. We call it the flexible learning experience in education. Is an initiative of the Department of Education Division of Negros Oriental. And of course, this was initiated. Um, this is a modular learning a modality that is fit for both the distance learning and face-to-face -face interaction classes. And we know for a fact that the only way to go forward is to go online. But for the Division of Negros Oriental, we also acknowledge the fact that not all our students and our learners have equal access and have fair access to resources, especially if we talk about distance learning. Maunang naakaron ang Flexi Ed because it is meant to be, you know, a kind of learning modality that is fair to everyone here in the province of Negros Oriental. All right, so Karen, I know everyone is very excited to meet our speaker this afternoon. She'll be talking about how schools all over the world are bringing the classroom to the students. Basically, she'll be talking about best practices, especially from third world countries and how they deliver quality basic education to learners all throughout their constituents and to their own respective countries. So we're very excited to listen to this talk. But before that, allow me to introduce her to everyone. All right, our guest speaker for our episode today is the third secretary and vice consul at the Philippine Embassy in London. During her tour of duty, she has handled a diverse range of portfolios, one including education. In 2019, she was one of seven who were recognized during the education conference in London for her work in education diplomacy. She graduated summa cum laude with a bachelor's degree in mass communication from Silliman University and is currently pursuing her master's degree in contemporary diplomacy, majoring in internet governance from the University of Malta. So, atong tagaan sa masiwang pakpak, our guest speaker today, Stacy Danica Alcantara Garcia. Hello, Ati Stacy. Hello, maayong buntag, Hans. Maayong buntag sa tanan nga viewers nato sa Flexi N. All right, you know, excited kayo ming tanan. We're very happy to have you here in our second episode. And excited kayo mi sa unsa imong ma-share sa amoa karong adlaw. All right, excited. so are you ready? Yes, definitely. So, Stacy, you will be you you will only be given 20 minutes for your entire talk, no interruption. Course, and mm -hmm. we are we are quite certain. Sure, good morning. Ang imo ang talk will be very meaningful and excitefull. Sa tanan sa Negros Oriental, including not just the teachers, the learners, but also the parents watching. Mm -hmm. All right, so ready na ka? Yes, ready. All right, so you may start. Okay, so mayung buntag usab sa tanan natong viewers. Uh, samot na sa Negros Oriental and. Personally, I'd like to thank uh, the Department of Education in Negros Oriental, meaning a higayon, no, to share some of the best practices from around the world. So, as your third secretary and vice consul sa Philippine Embassy in London, I've had the chance to also speak with my um, colleagues and also with my counterparts from the different embassies and to see, no, to learn from them kung unsa ilahang mga gipang buhat in their respective countries. Um, we all know na COVID-19, this pandemic has taken us by surprise. Anang yun ang affected. It's not just the Philippines, but all countries around the world have really been challenged to step up meaning a pandemic samot na ang atong education sector so it's not just a challenge on resources but it's also a challenge on the creativity not only of the national governments but also among all people all stakeholders in all countries in at all levels 
it's it has become a litmus test actually no for those of us who are advocating for education it has become quite a litmus test sa ato ang desire to make education more accessible and to really bring it to our students so what i'm going to do today is that i will take all of you on a tour around the world and we will see what worked for the different countries on sa ilang mga best practices i'm hoping that after hearing these examples from countries na more or less similar ilahang challenges sa ato sa pilipinas this will really open our minds and and inspire us and will help us identify kung unsa man ang pwede natong i-adapt and kung unsa ang nabuhat na sa nato and we can do even better so I'd like to start now and I'm going to show you a few examples no, in a few slides. So I hope that you will really learn a lot and draw inspiration from these examples. So let me start. So a lot of these examples are actually drawn from the different, um, it's actually drawn from the different continents around the world. And I would like to show you um, a few examples for each of the best practices. So there. Let me just open the slide. So kadali lang ha. So what are among mga best practices karon from our different from the different countries around the world? So I'd like to start with the most basic one. And one of the best practices shared by some of the most successful countries nga nahimo nila nga dad on ang education, ang classroom to their students is by assessing the situation. So they had different strategies for different levels of connectivity because we have to accept that although online is the way forward and it is the way it is uh, the future of education kining distance learning it also cannot be denied that a lot of our students a lot of our learners and also a lot of our teachers vary in terms of connectivity kay dili man tanan ang nay access to education so Countries, for example, such as uh, Bhutan, ang gibuhat sa ilang mga schools no, at the onset yod of this pandemic was already to have an inventory kung kinsa sa ilang mga learners and also among their teachers ang naay access to internet and kinsa ang walay access to internet. So countries like Bhutan collected data on the number of students nga adunay access ni ining internet kinsay nay access to smartphones kinsay nay access to television and from there they created content that can be accessed to the different these different channels in countries na pud sa for example in countries like colombia so what they did was for those for families no with limited or little internet connectivity they also created kits to be distributed i think in in some areas of the philippines na for those for families with no connectivity adunay mga gina distribute nga materials that they can access so that there is really no excuse for not learning during the pandemic and of course in countries like Ecuador, Sierra Leone, Guyana, there has been a lot of effort to create different ways for students and teachers to adapt to the situation. But it all begins with creating a strategy that is based on data. So one of the best practices is to really use research to create robust strategies in order for the materials to reach the learning materials, to reach to its target audiences. So, many ang mga students nato, and also, of course, their parents. So, what's the second best practice? 
our parents, the parents sa ato mga learners are your partners, are our partners in bringing education, in bringing our lessons from the classroom and into the different homes. So this is a very beautiful example of collaboration. And the picture here shows a scene, a typical scene in Indonesia, Karon, where a father is teaching, helping, facilitating the learning process sa ilahang mga balay. But I'd also like to mention other countries with the same strategy. Let's take, for example, sa Belize. So what, what's happening in Belize? The Ministry of Education is creating developing video lessons and not just video lessons but also guide questions for their parents. So, aduna a conscious effort to bring parents into the fold as the frontliners in the process of teaching students, of teaching their, their kids about important lessons. Another example is El Salvador. So, What's happening in El Salvador is that adunay mga modules gina prepare no wherein gi, gi organize na ni siya by level uh, grade school for example high school and so on and so forth and then teachers provide guidance to the parents and lines are open so they can ask questions they can brainstorm and they can co-create content even. And in the Kyrgyz Republic, adunay gitawag nga reading family program where teachers and parents work together. Uh, they have a certain lineup of books na pwede nga i-read along sa mga parents and na sa mga guide questions. So it's really making the most also of the resources that you currently have. And in Peru, there's a WhatsApp line open for parents to directly ask teachers in their schools kung naasila questions on the learning modules na gihatag. So in times of pandemic, nga naatay at ginatawag na lockdown and all of us, most of us are at home, we really have to bring in, partner with, with the parents of our students in order to make sure na padayon gihapon ang learning process. And among other uh, countries around the world, a beautiful example that I was able to, to, to see and to learn from is that they're also using a lot of local solutions to get rid of mga dependencies. And they also take this time to not only educate the students, but to also partner with the parents in teaching local culture, local heritage, to imbibe that sense of pride of ilang mga students on local literatures. So I think no, this is really inspiring and this is really beautiful. And third best practice that really stood out to me is that it, it has something to do with being resourceful. So it's about making the most of all available resources. So for example, um, we have certain countries, certain areas within countries, in fact, na majority of our learners do not have access to internet. So what you ang, ang, ang automatic response dayon sa mga schools and ministries of education is to try to adjust to this reality by bringing by making sure that learning materials are available in different channels or different mediums so for example in areas in in some hinterlands na dili available ang dili kaayo available no ang internet ang tv ang radio textbooks are being reproduced, ang mga hard copies are being reproduced and distributed to these families. Uh, we, and it includes a particular learning schedule. Dayon, let's say for example, in uh, certain countries where basis sa ilahang research, most of the learners have access to mobile phones, which is in, in a lot of countries, for example, in Timor-Leste, um, ubiquitous kaayo ang mga mobile phones. What they did is to make the lessons available through these mobile phones, through certain partnerships. Na ako po i-share ninyo later on, no? And then there are also ways to adapt to the reality. For example, kung ang pinaka-available is text-based, 
and sa mobile phone gihapon, certain schools and even certain teachers are adapting to it by making their lessons available in mediums like WhatsApp, uh, WeChat, through uh, text-based na learning. And in fact, I've tried this because um, although this, this particular experience uh, is not applicable sa I haven't tried it in, in in grade school, but I've currently tried it in my uh, in, in in pursuing my masters. So it's a blended learning. It's text based. Dili mi mag video sa teacher, but na I text na available. And then to score for your class participation, you have to leave hypertext or you highlight ni mo ang particular phrase sa entry that struck your attention, and then you can write down comments. It's quite resourceful in that dili kaysa demanding sa data. Because usama ni ka concern, no? For many areas around the world, it is ang availability and affordability sa data. And then, you also have other countries. For example, you have countries like Liberia, Rwanda, and uh South Sudan, for example, that make use of radio broadcasting to ensure that bisan ug nasa balay ang mga estudyante with their parents makadungog sila og broadcast aning ilang mga lessons. So more on that on on the next na best practice which is technology, no? Technology is our friend. So technology isn't just about online it's not just about internet but it's also about the different forms of communication technology and uh, mass media technology that we can use for the purposes of education so popular ones context based a lot of countries are using messaging apps like whatsapp uh, viber which is very popular the sasa asia Sa audio naman, na ay mga teachers who are developing podcasts and making it available online. And uh, sometimes they also collaborate with uh, radio stations to make their podcasts available at a wider scale for those who do not have access to internet. So video, we've seen this. A lot of teachers, a lot of uh, classes are making use of online meeting platforms, sama sa Zoom, no? to get their messages, to get their message across to the students, or Google Meet, and video sharing platforms. Nalingaw ka, ayoko, because I've seen, you know, even some of my uh, former uh, grade school teachers really doing their best to bring their lessons online, to really uh, create a Partic to, to, to produce videos to make sure that dili lang nila mahatod ang ilang lessons sa ilaha mga students in their different homes, but to make this engaging and to make this appealing for today's generation. So, other examples from uh, other countries. Argentina has has a very good, uh, has a best practice in terms of using technology to deliver education. So, very ingenious sad ang ilahang angalan sa ilahang website na sa ilahang Ministry of Education. So, their domain is .ar and uh, ang ilahang, ang, ang, ang full name no, sa ilahang ilang website is eduk.ar. So if you just put that together, it's edukar, to educate. So it's very catchy. And in this particular platform, nakaredi na ang mga different resources and materials that teachers and students can access for their home learning needs. And also, Ma-access po dito ang ilahang radio program which uh, they have prepared for various subjects and various levels. So this is an example of using technology and of making whatever resources you have work uh, for the different learners, for the different teachers. Brazil is also very um, enthusiastic in using YouTube to uh, make sure na ilahang mga lessons are available to a wide number of students. I mentioned a while ago, Timor Leste, mga mobile phone lessons that uh, students, even with the simplest na smartphone, can access. 
Of course, sa Liberia, they have content delivered by radio and also by text. And there is this program they call Rising on Air. It's a free distance learning solution. And of course, uh, you know, Rwanda, South Sudan with radio lessons and text-based lessons. Now we come to one of the most important uh, best practices and it is something that is applicable daily lang sa education but in other areas in other sectors as well not just in fighting the pandemic but even during normal times this is very important and i'm talking about collaboration so let's talk about this in the context of education Collaboration is key. Labi na karong panahon no, sa crisis because when we partner with other institutions, with other people, when we bring different kinds of talent and expertise together, mas dako gitawag ma-achieve. In this case, when schools and education ministries partner with telcos, internet providers, mass media, and tech companies. This is a powerful combination in helping us touch a greater number of students and in helping us make sure that the lessons get to the students and that, of course, learning is fun. Un sa may mga best practices, Annie. I'd also, when I discuss this, I'd also like for you to think un sa may mga examples sa inyong particular areas, no? sa inyong mga LGUs, sa inyong mga probinsya, that uh, makita ninyo na uh, there is uh, the, the power, makita ninyo ang power sa collaboration. So, we have Croatia. What's happening in Croatia? Very simple and yet uh, very powerful. Sa Croatia, internet companies are providing free internet access to students from lower income classes. This is a very beautiful example of making education and the internet accessible. Key player ang mga internet providers and telcos ni ini because the internet is an enabler of other human rights. Labina ang right to education. So we're seeing karon sa pandemic in certain many places around the world, internet companies and telcos are really stepping up to help countries, governments, schools, LGUs achieve the goal of making education more accessible. Sa Egypt, so they contracted an online learning provider. It's called Edmondo para mag-deliver o remote learning or remote instruction to the country's entire K-12 student body. There are also areas like uh, Dominican Republic. No? Aside from providing um, lessons through broadcast media, which is very popular in the country and very ubiquitous, makitaan siya bisag asa, they also, are, they also set up uh, Wi-Fi hotspots free Wi-Fi hotspots for students and teachers to access the internet. And in other places like Jamaica, do not gitawag na zero-rated access to education websites. On something zero-rated access, you've probably experienced this, no? Kanang musulod mo sa mall, for example, or you're in a particular area, and then mahimo ninyo nga i-access ning ubang mga websites for free. So karon. In certain countries like Jamaica, what they're doing is that uh, mga education websites, uh, ganing mga website nga na-accredit, nga, maka, nga dun ay mga important learning materials, zero rate siya para mga students and teachers can access these materials for free. In other areas, they also collaborated in other areas like Kenya, for example, and Nigeria. They collaborated with radio stations so that at certain pilaka hours of a day and mauni siyang schedule, pwede nilang i-broadcast, mahimo nilang i-broadcast ang mga lessons based on a particular uh, lesson plan. So there is close collaboration diha between the education ministries and their different um, radio stations, such as Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. What else? So Paraguay, this is also a very nice partnership with Microsoft 
to support distance learning. So, daghan ka ay yung mga new ideas o mga new projects ng GUA because of partnerships being built. And um, really, makita ni mo nga this pandemic, for, for better or for worse, no, it has really accelerated our um, pag-adopt na to og bago nga technology and it has also challenged us it has really challenged a kaning education sector in coming up with innovative ways to make use of what available technology there is haron dili ma sacrifice ang learning sa atong mga students now just to wrap up atong mga best practices so what are the key takeaways that we have seen? No? I'm, I, I wanted to limit this into three. So number one, we have to be very quick to adapt to the situation. For sure, ang COVID-19 pandemic, dili din siya ang last nga pandemia na atong magian. It won't be the last crisis that we will go through together. So we have to be very quick to adapt to the situation. Tinood man, nothing could have prepared us for this kind of disruption. Who would have known na one day, mumata na lang ta, and then the world completely changed. The world as we know it, katong normal nga atong naandan sa una, where we uh, do the usual things like uh, go inside the, sabot sa learning, mga ato sa classroom, uh, mulingkod ta sa atong desk, maminaw ta sa, sa atong teachers. Um, in many cases, na usog na siya, and distance learning has become the norm, karon. So we have to be quick to adapt. We have to be quick to anticipate, no, and to come up with solutions, creative solutions to these kinds of uh, disruptive events, karon. Which leads me to the next point: it's to innovate. So innovating isn't just about creating something new, but it's also related to the third point is reinvention. It is about trying to find new ways to make use of what we have. So whether it's a combination of technology, whether it is trying to uh, make to, to maximize kaning mga TV, mga radio, whatever we have on hand. Because ang learning sa atong students, it really can't wait. Education can't wait. That's why we have to be very quick and creative sa ato ang mga solutions. So, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. I hope no, that this quick uh, tour around the world has inspired us and has given us some ideas kung unsa ang pwede natang buhaton. But more importantly, I hope that it has been able to show na Ang Philippines is not the only country affected by COVID-19 and that even in countries where resources are incredibly scarce and limited and grabe kaayo ang mga pagsulay in terms of delivering education, makaya regyon for as long as we have the desire to really uh, make education accessible and for as long as we are open enough in terms of thinking of new solutions in doing and in accomplishing the same goal that we have had and that is to bring education to our students to make it accessible labi na atong mga walay access to internet and other modern kinds of technology and our desire no to make education more inclusive so maulak na Taghang salamat o mayong buntag usab sa tanan. Alright. So, thank you, Kaayo, Stacy, for that very meaningful um, tour around the world. No? As you can see, if guys, uh, sa mga naglantaw sa ato ang um, episode karon, that was such a very meaningful um, you know, talk from Stacy Danica Alcantara telling us of the different best practices across continents around the world. If kaya nila, so kaya po nato diri sa Pilipinas o most important diri sa Negros Oriental. And very important to remember the three um, takeaways, and that is to adapt, 
to reinvent and to innovate. And that is what FlexiEd really is all about. So thank you, good Kayo Stacy, uh, uh, Stacy, for that very meaningful and insightful talk. Um, of course, before we end, do you have any parting words to all of our viewers and to all our audience watching um, right now? Well, I guess uh, it's all in good hands. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time to watch and to support FlexiEd. So it's innovations like these that help us bring education forward. And uh, yeah, usapa kaya ang kasagara natong mga viewers karon are teachers. So teachers from different uh, divisions, San Negros Oriental. Um, I'd also wish to encourage all the teachers no, na taghan yung kayo tang mabuhat uh, for as long as uh, we are open to different possibilities in terms of uh, pag-edukar sa ato ang mga estudyante. So I hope that you will all keep that enthusiasm because pag-enthusiastic ang teacher, pag makita sa student na enthusiastic ang teacher to uh, impart these lessons, then dako kay na siya og effect uh, sa na maganahan ang student to learn all right thank you so much so at Stacy actually is all uh, is in london karong adlawa no now while we are doing this talk and is we're very happy to have um, her with us uh, karon sa episode nato sa FlexiEd. And that's true what she said, na kaning FlexiEd is not just for students, not just for um, for teachers, but it's for everybody who is also trying to adapt, to innovate, and to reinvent, especially during the times of the pandemic. So that's all for today. Thank you guys sa tanana naglanta karon sa atong episode of FlexiEd. Once again, my name is Hans Villarmosa, and of course, keep posted and keep tuned for our next episode sa mga sudotong episode, and we'll be having more meaningful and insightful episodes in the future. Once again, I'm Hans, this is FlexiEd, and in times of the pandemic, keep learning, stay safe.